Do you find it hard to explain to friends and family what you now do? Are you wasting valuable time by attempting to figure out challenges on your own? We have created a community for ex-corporate people running their own business who want to live a life they love whilst giving back to their community. This is the Build Live Give Show. We bring you first-hand experiences of guests going through many of the struggles you face each and every day. We get real with no corporate BS. And now your host, Paul Higgins. Welcome to the Build Live Give Show. I'm Paul Higgins and I'm your show host. And today we've got Justin Bourne from Blank Canvas Visual. Justin started off as an engineer and he decided to take a more of a practical path than going through university. And he worked for some small and medium firms in Perth in Western Australia. And then he decided that that wasn't quite right for him, especially corporate part of life. So he went into a small startup and he definitely learned what not to do in a small startup. And he sort of goes into the detail of uh, what that was. And then that led him to starting his own business. So that was three years ago. He runs a fantastic agency at Scaling. He's got eight staff now and he goes through the roller coaster of running your own business. So certainly get a pen and paper ready for some great actionable advice from Justin. And if you're like Justin, where you're an ex-corporate running your own business and you want to be surrounded by a fantastic community, or you may be actually in corporate and thinking, I just love some help on how do I start my own business? then the group Build, Live, Give is just right for you. So you can actually find out more about the Build, Live, Give community. It's a uh, free Facebook community at buildlivegive.com. And also for those, if it's the first time, uh, certainly uh, listen and we'd love you to subscribe. If you have been listening to the episodes and you haven't subscribed yet, please Do And we'd also love to get your five-star review. That helps to spread the word. But what I'll do now is hand you over to Justin from Blank Canvas Visual. But before we dive into today's show, leaving corporate to run your own business can be extremely hard and lonely. You start off in a euphoric state, and at some point you look at your cash flow and start to doubt your abilities. What you learn in corporate doesn't always translate, and you are bombarded every day with new challenges. Learning something yourself is okay, but it can be both timely and costly. Friends and family want to help, but they don't have the specific experiences you need. This is why we created the Build, Live, Give community, a free community with hundreds of people just like you answering questions and sharing real experiences and definitely no spam. This coupled with weekly interviews on hot topics will help you expedite success. Search for the Build, Live, Give group in Facebook and answer the three questions to gain access. Anyway, enough from me. Now it's time to hand you over to one of the BLG members to hear their wonderful journey. Welcome, Justin Bourne from Black Canvas to the Build, Live, Give show. It's great to have you on, Justin. And what we're going to do is find out more about you through the course of the interview. But why don't you just start with a bit of your backstory? Hi, Paul. Thanks for, for having me. Really privileged to, to be on the show. Um, yeah, I guess a quick brief background of myself. Um, I don't have a huge crazy story like some other people and entrepreneurs out there, but um, it's pretty simple, pretty standard. Went to a public school, pretty standard home life, nothing special. Um, I realized in the late high school what I wanted to do, which was kind of down the engineering path. I was really lucky and really grateful that I jumped on, you know, knowing what I wanted to do. Um, and kind of from that decision, started doing everything I could to kind of get into engineering and drafting. Um, I actually didn't go to uni, so I was never a, never a fully fledged engineer in the end. Um, I was quite, I got, ended up getting a traineeship an apprenticeship at a company called uh, Wood and Grieve Engineers, who are, who are a mid-size type company. And I um, ended up kind of, when I first started, realized that when I got in, I was kind of the bottom of the food chain. And I think just my personality, I wasn't really vibing that. And um, so I kind of continually worked my um, way up um through the different i guess ranks from drafter to designer and a few other things and then i was given an opportunity to go work at a a large uh, national uh, sorry global company called wally parsons where it was a big eye-opener for me as a young age um it was great i was earning lots of money but it just wasn't 
you promised the world and when you were hired, nothing really eventuated from it. But like I said, because I was young, it enabled me to do some great things. And then I worked there for a few years, um, not really enjoying it. And then I had actually an opportunity to join a startup engineering company, um, which then I kind of jumped on, um, which was a great opportunity. I worked there for two or three years until I made the decision to start my own business um, in a completely different field to what I was doing. I now create pretty pictures and I started a company called Blank Canvas. And um, that was close to three years ago and it's been a bit of a whirlwind and here we are. Brilliant. So, Great. Well, yeah. we'll certainly uh, dig more into what you're doing uh, currently, but why don't you tell something, uh, tell something about yourself to the VLG listeners that your family or friends might know about you, but uh, we certainly don't. Yeah, sure. Um, I was recently asked this question as well, and um, my answer changed when I recently got married and the bridesmaids did a little bit of a speech and they were shocked the night before when they were writing it when they found this out about me. I didn't know it was such a big deal, but I think it's a good one to share is they were quite surprised. No one really knows who I don't share is I'm a black belt in um, Taekwondo and, and martial arts. And I fought um, nationally and internationally at one point. So yeah, not many people know about that. Oh, brilliant. Well, look, my brother, quick, quick story. My brother was, um, one of the Victorian champs was going to the, what would have won the Australian and was going to the Olympics in Taekwondo and his fiance at the time had done one lesson. We were all having a few drinks. She went to wrestle him at uh, wee hours of the morning. And I said, stop. She didn't. And uh, she broke his ankle. He never did it again. And uh, they, they never got married. So there's a little side story. <laughs> wow. For Taekwondo. But my, my son uh, does Taekwondo and I did it for a while as well. So uh, awesome. I really love it. So uh, oh, that's great. It's uh, great. And, uh, it's always nice to, uh, I suppose, have that confidence. And I certainly know for my son, it's, it's given him enormous confidence. Uh, yeah. To other things. It's, it gave me huge confidence through my teen years. Um, and I did it for seven years. And, uh, yeah, it's been a big influence on, on who I am today. Brilliant. So, so if, so if you, you sort of look at that transition from Warley Parsons into the, the startup engineering company was you know there anything at that time or well, sort of take me to that moment what what were you thinking was there anything holding you back what were sort of your key thoughts at that point when you really made that big transition well i guess there was two big moments because yeah i left the that the big corporate and the comfort of that i guess you could say at the time it definitely turned quickly over the years to a lot of people losing jobs so i left at a really great time um, I guess to answer your question at that moment, it was, for me, it was what was holding me back was, to be perfectly honest, was the money and the pay. I felt too comfortable. I was really enjoying that. I had a lifestyle and it was just like, you know, and I was only 22 or 23 at the time. So as you appreciate, I'm not that much older now, but <laughs> you could appreciate money that age is, is, is such a, um, an attractive thing um, for any kind of, you know, wanting to get ahead. So that was probably the biggest thing. And then going into unknown, you know, will this company fail? Will it actually last? What, what are the ongoing opportunities there? Um, and then I guess similarly, I went through the same kind of questions and scenarios when I decided to start my own company too. So yeah, I would say security um, and, um, the money kind of like that sense of safety yeah and and you know often so for me for example i went straight from corporate into my own business and uh it ended up being several but you yeah. took a, sort of a two-step what did you learn by working in someone else's startup that you then applied to your own it's a great question um i'm so grateful that i had that opportunity and i went through that experience it didn't end on best terms unfortunately but I learned a lot of it from it. And I think probably the thing is I learned how not to run a business or how to treat a team and staff. So I think that was the big thing um, is the leaders ahead of me and the founders um, just 
had a really, had actually had a corporate mindset that they were trying to apply to a five to 10 man team. And they also grew too quickly. So grew too quickly, not a very good culture, um, poor leadership, and ended up leading to their kind of demise. So um, yeah, I try to take that away and apply it now in my own business of, you know, really trying to look after staff and, and, um, and, and try to be the leader that they need in order for them to excel and become the best versions of them um, rather than the leader expecting them to just work, work, work and deliver for the leader as opposed to for the individual, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. And if I fast forward into the next, which is the build section, and sure. a little bit about, you know, blank canvas today. So if you walk into a, either a new client meeting or into a networking event and someone says, hey, Justin, what do you do at Black Canvas or what does Black Canvas do? How, how do you answer that? It's always a really um, tricky one. Um, I simply respond with we do artist impressions um, and sometimes have a bit of a joke if I get paid to make pretty pictures. Um, so that's kind of how I explain it. We do the 3D imagery for off the plan property. So we create um, pictures of buildings that don't exist yet um, and we get paid to make them. So uh, that's the most simplest way I can put it. Um, typically then that whips out sometimes the phone to then show them our Instagram account because it's easier to see it rather than explain it, um, which you can check out, a bit of a plug at blank canvas visuals on Instagram. Um, and that gives an example of the work that we produce as a company. Right, and, uh, and how do you make revenue? Um, so we, I guess, uh, you know, I guess can be considered a creative agency, graphic design, you could say as well. I commonly explain it, uh, I guess, compare it to website design. So we work on a project per project basis a developer, an architect, or a marketing agency comes to us and we've got this new building, we've got this new apartment block, whatever it may be. Here are the plans. We need to be able to sell it to people. Off you go. And so we charge them per, per kind of project. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how we do make revenue. And then I guess in the early days, it was just calling people, um, showing our work and getting in front of people to go, this is what we can do, this is what we're capable of. With any creative space, it's always a, chick it's always a very rough chicken egg scenario. You've got to, to get the work, you've got to show you can do the work and build that trust. And it's always trying to play between those two kind of ends of, you know, yes, we can do it. And they're like, show me. So that's one of the biggest challenges that, that we have sometimes in obtaining new work and obtaining clients that yep. is, is convincing them to believe in us that we've got the capability of doing it. And who are your ideal clients? So our ideal clients, I mean, we work with, like I said, property developers, architects and marketing agencies. Now, if you funnel that back in, I guess, into an ideal client, our ideal client is someone who, who really, first off, is just enjoyable to work with. And we've got a small handful and, you know, that you can actually have a relationship with and it's not just transactional. So it's just not like, here's the project, off you go. It's, um, you know, we want to work together, collaborate, and they kind of buy into the vision of actually wanting to showcase their building in a really great light, look to us to advise, respect what needs to be done, the work that needs to happen. And, you know, then we balance between each other and making sure we still hit the deadlines, but we can still get the time to, to invest in their project to, to make something really amazing. So that's kind of our I ideal client where we can also have a bit of banter and, and it's just, it's, it's enjoyable for both parties as opposed to it's just transactional. Um, yeah, that's kind of who we want to work with and who we try to work with. Yeah, I think it's so important because you can, I you always know, say to, to my clients in the club, if you, you know, pick and, you know, have your ideal client and make sure you only have those because otherwise you might as well go work for someone else or work back in corporate where you didn't have that luxury. So now that you do have the luxury, make sure you, uh, you leverage it and, uh, and learn from it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but if I can add in there, like it's taken, it took me a good two to three years to get to that level. You know, when you're growing, it's, and, and, and I think, you know, it's interesting as well as like at, at the time though, it's like if you need, say, that cash injection or you need the work, um, you know, acknowledge the reason you're working with that client. Um, if you're doing it for the money, do it for the money, but then just do a really good job for them. And, um, you know, we actually, I'm happy to admit we do charge a couple, sometimes a pain in the ass fee as well. It's like if we're going to work with you, you know, we need to grow as well and, and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd just add that in there. It, it's taken me personally a long time to be able to, to really hone in on that ideal client as well and um, not cave, <laughs> um, if that makes sense. No, it does. And, and also that continual refinement as well. I think uh, it's something that you continually learn from and it's often through experiences that you improve it the next time, which uh, I think your point there is um, really valid. Um, what about, you know, you've, you've been running this for three years now and you've had some experience, um, maybe not all good from the, the startup that you, you went into. What's been sort of your biggest learning to date that you could share with the BLG listeners? Oh, this is a big question. Um, I've gone through personally a few roller coasters um, over the last three years in, in building my business. Um, I'm the sole founder and kind of director. And so it's kind of, it has been all me, which is, it has its pressures. But say the biggest learning is actually understanding who I am and developing on myself. Um, it's kind of like the airplane theory, which is where, you know, the, the, the oxygen mask comes down, you put yours on before you can help others. You can't grow a business and grow a team or lead a team if you've got personal things going on or you've got personal baggage or other things like that. It's just not possible. Um, so all the biggest challenges that I've had have all been, I guess, limiting beliefs um, or self-sabotage and if that, you know, uh, to then push us forward. So from that, I've really gotten better at my self-awareness, understanding who I am, building habits in there to, to continue to practice those things. Um, and, and also, you know, I think the importance of, a, a larger vision, mission, and values, particularly when growing a team. And it's just as applicable when, if you're an individual running your own business to sometimes keep yourself in check. And sometimes it feels like, why am I doing this if it's just me? But it's in the long run and in the tough times that you're like, yeah, okay, this is why I'm doing it. Because there, there were moments that I've just thought to shut up shop and, uh, um, might as well be a freelance or even go work for someone else and make more money working with someone else. But you know, it's always temporary and you've got to reset yourself onto that longer type of yeah vision and mission, I guess. So that's the biggest learning for me is um, yourself. Yeah. And there's nowhere to hide. Is there like, I, I know in corporate, you know, there's always big numbers and uh, it's easy to sort of, um, I suppose fit into the, to the fold. Whereas, uh, yeah, running your, your own business, it's direct customer feedback, it's direct exposure. And, um, I think your, your point around, um, the I before the we is uh, really important. And I, I know when I worked for Franklin Covey and did some work for them, that it was all about, you know, start with the I and then you go to the we. So, um, brilliant point. As far as today, if you fast forward to today, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face today in running the business other than the ones you've mentioned? Um, so I think now there's different challenges. Um, so I started the company just purely myself and I've, I've grown it um, over the period of three years. We now have uh, eight staff um, in three different states. Um, and so I think one of the biggest challenges moving forward um, for us is uh, team and culture, continual refinement on, on that. Um, talent is actually a big problem and the most recent changes in Australia with visas and things like that is actually going to really hurt our business moving forward, which is probably a different conversation and topic, but I need to touch on that. Um, and I also think 
one of our other challenges still stems almost back to what I just said. It's still me. Um, and you shift and dynamic into different stages in business. You know, you might be working the day-to-day activities and then you grow and then you end up having to start to strategize and start thinking about longer term or start thinking about, you know, how can I get the best performance out of these, my team? How can I make sure that they've got every, all the tools they need to, to excel in their job? And so you're, you're responsible, you are responsible with everything, but the day-to-day tasks change. And so it's still, you know, combination of back to yourself as well, understanding you're in the next phase of growth for you personally. And um, if I bring it back to pure business for us, it's culture, talent and um, efficiencies um, rather than just chasing revenue. Um, it's kind of coming back and refining the bottom end before charging for the top end. Um, so, yeah. And if uh, Virginia, who I know is your partner, if Virginia was listening to this, and hopefully she will listen to this podcast, what will you, what would you like to say to her about the support she's given you through building Black Canvas? Blank Canvas, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Um, yeah, she's been um, a huge contributor um, and factor to, I guess, the success that we have experienced. Um, I would just like to thank her for her patience and her continual support. So I know for anyone who started a business in a relationship, it can be taxing for the relationship, just the amount of energy and time that's required to get any new venture off the ground. Um, And I'm just extremely grateful for, um, you know, her patience and her support. And she can't necessarily help technically, but, Look, I'm happy to admit emotionally she was um, supportive the whole way through and um, really is part of that reason of, like I said, um, getting your stuff sorted and without having our, we're, we're so lucky, our relationship. And, um, yeah, she's been a big part of enabling me to just go gun ho and build this thing. So, yeah, she's pretty amazing. Yeah, and as you said, you're the sole founder, but I I know for me, it was definitely um, my wife, Linda, really supported me, similar to Virginia, and, and, you know, it's hard if they've got a corporate background and they've never been in a small business to really understand, and, and I, I don't know about you, but certainly at times I wanted to sh- share things, good and bad, and I felt that it was normally bad at the start, and I didn't share enough of the, the highs, and therefore... Every time I went to her, it was always, you know, oh, here he comes again. It's, uh, it's something else. That's it's true. So, uh, I, yeah, did you uh, experience that in the beginning? Yeah. Look, you still, and even now, I think, you know, and, and I think everyone in general, like it's easier to talk about sometimes the negatives. Um, and even me most recently, I've just started to really practice and learn to just take a moment and enjoy the, the positives and own the positives, like own it. Um, and own it together, um, yeah. Because it's 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 part of least resistance to talk about that. And, but yeah, I can definitely relate. And uh, yeah, I think it still happens. <laughs> Excellent. Well, what we'll do now is go into the live section. So um, I used to ask people about you know the typical week, but I, I realised myself and for others that there was no such thing as a typical week. But there's always habits. There's habits that you've learned through your corporate career and now in your own business that uh, make you successful. So what are some of those daily habits for you? Um. So I don't know whether I learned these back in. I know that's not true. I guess personal daily habits I've learned over the last couple of years, which was through a bit of an exercise of self-discovery. Um, for me, and it's, it does sound cliche, but I did take up um, meditation over the last couple of years. That's helped me a lot. And um, also journaling um, daily with gratitude and things like that has also helped me um, significantly. That's been pretty pretty recent. Um, I think any skills from the corporate that have really helped me is more of, I guess, I was very exposed to teams and larger projects, so I had to build awareness, and that awareness of just different avenues and not having tunnel vision helps me um, in the current business. Um, But yeah, daily habits most recently for me is 
I know it sounds cliche, but it's crazy. Meditation, journaling, and um, exercising. Exercising in the morning is normally one of the, when I do that, such a productive day. And with meditation, is there any particular app or any particular style that you? Um, I just do the guided through an app called Calm. Um, and it's 10 minutes a day and um, it was a little bit hard to get into. Um, I do it in the morning, but, um, and I don't do it every single day, um, but I'll do it a good 80% of the time. And uh, I found that to be um, piggybacked with some gratitude stuff, extremely helpful, particularly through the tough times. Excellent. So the next section we'll go into is the give section. I know in the, the uh, pre pre interview process, we sort of talked a little bit about this, but um, you, you know, I, I normally ask guests about a cause or a, a community they're involved in. I know for you, it's very much been focused. You, you know, you're only three years into the business, really focused on that. Um, I'd love to just get your perspective on where you're at with uh, the cause and, and what you plan to do in the future. Yeah, sure. I was a little bit, um, got this question got me thinking a bit. Um, one of our key values at the company, we have six, is to give back. Um, and the reason it be, was become a value is because it's something we, we did struggle with um, and I have struggled with personally. So, you know, but I guess I made a conscious decision with my business um, probably at a tipping point about six months in of whether to freelance or to grow this, to have staff and to, to grow this to a big level. And I made the decision to grow it to another level and take on staff because the work that we do is extremely niche and I have a major passion for it and love it. And I just get a massive kick of being able to give other people the opportunity to get paid for what they enjoy doing so they can come to work and like, don't feel like it's work. You know, there's the saying of, you know, if you find what you love doing, you don't work another day in your life. Um, and so that's what we're trying to enable to do, I guess, with our company is to enable people to be able to be the best versions of themselves and do their great work. And then hopefully we, we have contributed to some um, charities over the last couple of years. We do that through little competitions internally and we raise some money um, and they've just been on an individual basis. So we normally put that out to the team um, if they have a particular cause um, that they like. Um, we don't necessarily have one, I guess, overarching one. Um, and there's been a handful of, of different ones that we've, I guess, contributed to over the years. And we hopefully would love to do more as we grow and, um, you know, start to, I guess, pull some more profits to be able to share back and give back and really live up to our value. Right, so the next or and the last section is the take action section, and this is really yeah. where you can give some some really good uh, tips and value to the BLG listeners, so that they can uh, go and take action to to help them build a great business, you know, live a great life, and and give back, which is um, our motto. So around uh, the first one is around personal productivity. So what's a key personal productivity tip you'd like to give the listeners? Wow, this is a tricky one. Um, so one that I found really great for me um, most recently is, um, so we use a project management tool called Asana for um, the company. And in that you can set up, you can personalize it. And I normally do like a daily planner kind of down to the hour of the tasks that I kind of want to do for the day. Um, meetings kind of go in first and then I've, Kind of slot in around those things and pull tasks from a bigger pool um, and when i kind of jot that down in the morning first thing when i come in it's really helpful because i have a thousand things on my to-do list um, and it can be overwhelming when you stop a task and you're like okay what am i going to do and you've got a thousand things to pick from so i find when you actually just map it out and kind of try to stick to it it's super handy um, so yeah and sometimes just starting, <laughs> just start and then you build momentum <laughs> and then action leads to more action. So other than Asana, what are some of the other apps that you have either on your home screen 
or that you use on your desktop? Um, yeah, I, I saw this one and I was thinking about it. Um, I don't really use a lot of productivity apps on my, my phone. Um, mainly my phone is more social media and uh, something uh, audio, um, audible and podcasts. Um, one that's been pretty cool is Blinkist, um, which is a cool little app that um, summarizes books. So if you get a good few book recommendations, um, you can it covers off the key topics or the key message of the book. And if you, I guess, like that book, after you read that and you want to dive deep, you can go buy it. So it's kind of like a, uh, it's a cool little app to potentially, um, you know, save um, time. Otherwise, unfortunately, I don't really have anything super amazing or special. Um, keep it pretty simple. Maybe that's a hack. <laughs> yeah. less, less is more. Yeah, well, in today's world where there's, uh, we're sport by choice, I think that's a, that's a very good one. And uh, I, know, I know you know my business partner, Scott, and um, you know, that's sort of the, the key thing for him is to uh, keep me abreast of everything that's out there, but then sort of narrow down to, uh, to a core few. So um, what you said makes perfect sense. So you said Audible and uh, podcasts. So what are some of the favorite um, audio books you like to listen to or podcasts that you subscribe to? Um, so I haven't listened to too many podcasts recently, which is, which sucks, but, um, probably one of my, my top favorites is, um, Tim Ferriss's podcast. Um, I'm sure that one community is pretty popular. It's, um, a lot of gems in there. Um, and then I have recently been getting into a little bit of Joe Rogan's podcast as well. Um, always some good gems. Um, in terms of audio books, like, kind of do them in between um proper books sounds weird actual books <laughs> physical ones um but i guess through audible one of my favorite ones has been the ryan holidays um which is ego is the enemy or obstacle is the way and then i would i guess i don't know whether this is your next question or what but i think my top book i think is the alchemist is a must read um from any uh, for anyone um, particularly starting business i must go back and reread that i must admit i, I read that oh, i can't remember but it was a long time ago so i've sort of lost the key principles out of it so i need to yeah. go back and uh, reread well, it. yeah it's an easy read but what i found and i guess even with all books is when you grow personally like you might read it if i read the alchemist when i first started my business i probably wouldn't have got a lot taken away from it but when i read it i think about just over 12 months ago, it really struck a chord for me. Um, so I think as you grow personally, certain books can, can really hit you. As your awareness opens and you get exposed to more things, you start to see the little gems that might be there. Um, yeah, so I know it's probably a book you could read every couple of years, um, I would say. So, yeah. Brian, well, look, you've had a... A fantastic journey through, you know, um, some large engineering, mid-size and large engineering into a startup, now three years in your own. And uh, I know you've done a lot of personal development, including, you know, time at the Entourage where um, you met my business partner, Scott. If you had to wrap all that up and just leave some parting advice for the BLG listeners, what would that parting advice be? That's a big question. Um... I don't know, maybe there's an echo and a theme in it, but I definitely say is like, if, you, if, if something's really annoying you, you're not liking it, you're not vibing it, then there's obviously something that's not connecting or resonating with you. And depending, like actually, you know, a few people say this is like, just go out and give it a, give it a crack. And um, like, as I say, what do you got to lose? And that, when I was about to decide to start my own business, I remember my, my granddad saying to me, um, he goes, how, he asked me this question. He goes, how old are you? Uh, at the time, I was 24. So everyone's like in that position. But he goes, what do you mean? He goes, even if you stuff up, you've got all your life ahead of you to, to rebuild. So who cares? Just go. And it was kind of like, that was it. So I guess if it was anything, it's kind of like, you know, give it a go or start taking the small steps um, into 
heading in that direction. You are the master of your own destiny. All the power is in within you. You can't rely on necessarily others or some magical thing to happen. Um, just go out there and kind of give it a go, work on yourself and um, yeah, hopefully you can enable then yourself to give back and contribute to a larger cause as well. So I guess that would be the one thing. <laughs> it's, it's pretty big, that one. And, you know, where can people find out more about uh, you, Justin, and also Blank Canvas? Uh, it's probably best just on my, my Instagram um, and the company's Instagram. So mine is at JTBZO. And the company's one is at Blank Canvas Visuals. You can also find our company website at blankcanvas.studio. So no .com.au, just .studio. Excellent. Well, uh, really appreciate you sharing your your journey. Um, it's it's great that you've made the step uh, so young, really. And as your grandfather said, you know, you've uh, you've got so much to give and uh, and and a lot a lot of time to really enjoy this uh, brave move that you made. So you've given lots of great advice today. We wish you all the best in the future, and thanks for uh, sharing with the BLG community today. Really appreciate you having me on and I'm, uh, yeah, really grateful I could at least contribute a little bit. So thank you. Cheers, Justin. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for listening to the Build Live Give Show. If you found this show helpful, please share it with others so we can build businesses, live great lives, and give back to the community. If you would like to join the BLG community, go to our website, www.buildlivegive.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.